Hey everybody, this is Jason. Yes, I know. It's been a few months since, a couple months actually, since I've done a video. The last one I did was in Portland. Uh, I've decided to settle in the Midwest, in Chicago. I'm going to be here for a little while. Um, this video is really not going to be about me. It's going to be kind of, a, I'm going to start doing a series of book reviews. I've listened to a lot of books on tape as I've been driving across the country. Uh, and I've read some really cool stuff. And I just kind of wanted to share them really quick in some of these videos. And hopefully maybe you'll go check these people out. They've had an impact on my life and my thinking. Um, the first one I'm going to do is Morris Berman's Why America Failed. If you're not familiar with Morris Berman, he's a political writer. He lives in southern Mexico. He's uh, an American, and he moved there, I don't know, 20 years ago, I guess now. He's an expat, and he's um, a tremendous thinker and a tremendous writer. Very interesting, has a lot of good detailed references, and you can see a lot of his stuff um, on YouTube. You can see him talk. You can talk. You don't have to buy the book, but I suggest that you either buy the book on tape or you just buy it and read it. It's a quick read, and it's a very, very, very interesting analogy. Uh, excuse me, an analysis of why America failed. That's what the name of the book, and it was done in a trilogy of books. I'm only going to talk about why America failed. Um, but basically, the contention comes down to that America was is a nation of hustlers. He he points out that this country was founded by the British. George Washington was a land de, um, developer, a land speculator, amongst other people who helped found this country. There were some good patriots. There's some good people here. But essentially, this America is, a, America is a business. And it's unlike any other nation that was ever been created. And, and I find that to be an incredibly enlightening way to look at how America is. Um, John Steinbeck, and he quotes John Steinbeck in this. John Steinbeck says, the great writer of, from, of Grapes of Wrath, of Mice and Men, Tortilla Flats, uh, East of Eden, and many other books. He wrote, John Steinbeck said, that poor people in this country consider themselves to be temporarily inconvenienced millionaires. And that's kind of where we are at. That's why we have Donald Trump. That's why we have no health care. That's why we have the 400 richest households in America getting another tax break so they don't have to pay for health care for the poorest people in this country. Um, 22 million people are going to be left without health care if this thing passes the House of Representatives. I'm not saying that it will. A lot of good people, I love good people, but a lot of senators are fighting it because they're basically fighting for their jobs. Rand Paul... Susan Collins, a few others, Republicans, Democrats, etc. Bernie Sanders has made some statements about it. But we live in a nation of people who want to be rich. And it's a very difficult... Morris Berman makes the argument that we are to blame. Our leaders, we can, we can blame our leaders and we can blame the propaganda systems, but really at the end of the day, we're to blame. And I agree and disagree with that, but I can see the points that he's making. And I think many people, I think you could see it too if you read it or or got it on tape, or whatever you're going to do. America's a business. And Brad Pitt says it well at the end of Killing Killing Them Softly. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube, the clip, just the end clip, of him talking about America's a business. Now, fucking pay me. America was founded by a bunch of people who are were trying to get rich. And it's that, that inherent way of thinking has taken our society into a, the, where we are currently with a president like Donald Trump. I've coined it as postmodern surrealist America. And it's the inevitability of capitalism and it's the inevitability of an empire that was founded on the ideas and the premise and has stayed that way that there is no alternative. You know, Morris Berman refers to it as the alternative way of thinking, meaning that, you know, not liberal, but alternative. People who have said, you know, this is like Steinbeck, like others, who have said, great thinkers, Vance Packard, um, many others, Marcuse, uh, many others, and have said, since the 1800s, really, uh, de Tocqueville, many others, that have said this country was founded on the premise of money, getting rich. And there's been times in our society that that has been toned down and people have, alternative people have, views have come out, but essentially it remains, how do I make more money and get rich? And it's, America's almost a pyramid scheme in a lot of ways. It's almost, it's just, it, it plays on everyone's greed and venality and it's a horrible fucking place. You can see it in our current state of our, our political leaders. You can see how money dictates who wins in politics. 90% of the time, whoever spends the most money is going to win. You can see how we don't have health care. We spend more money on the military than any other country. Almost every other nation combined virtually. $600 billion to a $1 trillion every single year. The subsidies that we're giving to big corporations, and yet we won't give people health care. 
we don't give people a break on on anything in this country, but we'll give corporations billions of dollars because they create jobs. When in fact we found that they don't create jobs, they just keep their money. I mean, and I can. And by the way, feel free to Google anything I'm about to fucking say if you don't believe me. Go look at how corporations took the TARP bailout money and didn't reinvest it. Look at how they're taking their money that they're making the record profits they're making and they're stacking cash. They're putting it offshore. They're putting it into. They're not reinvesting into infrastructure they're not reinvesting into jobs because they're terrified that that what happened in 2008 or 2007 is going to happen again <clears throat> and it will we're going to get another housing we're in a housing bubble right now and it will crash if you know anything about canada toronto is going through kind of something what we went through in 2008 not as bad but it is happening and it's just going to get worse they have more of a social systems than we do but they're still going to deal with it because they let investment banking rule the day up there Everybody started to believe in Justin Trudeau and how great he is and how, but he's just another, he's just another rich kid prick who, who got elected based on a lot of lies and a lot of promises that he's not keeping. Um, but I'm not talking about Canada, I'm talking about America. And again, the book is called Why America Failed by Morris Berman. <clears throat> looking at what Steinbeck said about inconvenienced millionaires and looking at how capitalism, there's winners and losers. You look at how this country loves people like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and Warren Buffett. You know, Warren Buffett is the one, he's the major stockholder in Wells Fargo, and he has kept all of the board of Wells Fargo on, even after all the recent scandals. The most recent one is the mortgage scandal that they're going through right now, that they that they're that they defrauded people on mortgages, they lied, they extended mortgages, they just to make a profit. And before that was the credit card scandal they had. They opened credit cards in people's names, accounts, and then charged them for it. And these people didn't even know what was going on. As a matter of fact, I know people who were, who were affected by this. And Warren Buffett had a chance in a, in a board of directors meeting to vote these people out. And he kept them because they're making money for him. He's an awful person. He's made a ton of money on the housing crisis and the crash. He owns Berkshire Hathaway, which is a, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed it, but they are a real estate company as well. They bought up all these a lot of these houses and buildings and now are renting them out at higher prices and 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 making you know record profits warren buffett has is makes money off tragedy and that's and the americans think that's a good thing i i would drove through the midwest and he's from nebraska people think he's awesome what do they call him the sage of omaha and he's they they love him because he eats popsicles because <laughs> he takes pictures with people by the way he charges those pictures that he takes with people that that he takes with company like the businesses that he owns he charges for those <laughs> for those pictures. He's a piece of shit. Bill Gates is a piece of shit who should have his house burned down. Uh, he owns the largest house in one of the largest houses in the world, and on a lake in in, in uh, Washington, and it should be burned to the fucking ground. Um, and it will be someday. Trust me. You can't you can't keep stealing from people and doing what they've done. Silicon Valley has, and and Berman goes into this in his book. Silicon Valley has caused this country an enormous amount of pain and suffering. I suggest anybody that doesn't believe that go to the, visit the West Coast, go visit the North, go look at housing prices, go look at how much taxes are owed by these these companies and corporations that don't have to pay their taxes because they have the money to fight it in court. And then you have people like Donald Trump who is cutting the IRS budget and getting rid of people so they don't so the IRS can't uh, is basically toothless. And they can only go after the little man and not the ones that owe the billions of dollars in taxes. That's America. That's capitalism. Money talks, bullshit walks. We've taken this country and we've turned the golden rule into do unto others as you'd have do unto you into who, who has the gold makes the rules. And that's, my, that's one of my favorite analogies about this horrible place to live. And we're all being suckered into patriotism. You know, I, I've gone to baseball games, a couple of baseball games, professional baseball games, which I've liked. I've, I've actually enjoyed. I was surprised I enjoyed them. But they, they do the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning of the game. They do God Bless America on the seventh inning. They... They're tricking you and tricking all of us. And I watch all these people stand up, and they're just so proud to live in this shithole country. For instance, White, so White Sox, where the White Sox play, is called Guaranteed Rate Field. Right outside of it is, is some of the poorest parts of Chicago. You can drive right as you drive in and right as you drive out. You see poor people on the sides of the road begging for money. You see them as they, they ask for money on the way in. You, you see every some form of poverty and degradation that exists. And then you go into the White Sox game and you, you get to have to stand for the national anthem and be proud of being an American. What are you proud of? You're proud that you have the largest military in the world that kills people uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a global scale that has a thousand military bases all over the world 
that, that gives massive tax subsidies to these killing machines that are Raytheon Douglas and Boeing and McDonnell Douglas, or excuse me, McDonnell Douglas, not Raytheon, not, but McDonnell Douglas and Texas Instruments and, and um, you know, Grumman and all these other places, you know, that's what you're proud of. You're proud that your, your health care is in the Senate right now is going to, is, the Senate is trying to pass a health care act so they can just give for, the 400 richest households in America another tax cut. You're proud that you don't have socialized medicine when 60, 65, 70% of Americans want it, a single payer option. You're proud of this? What are you proud of in America exactly? What you are is being propagandized to and they think, and the powers that be need to keep you in line and need to keep you wrapped in that American flag. You know, fascism will come to America, but it's already been here, but it will come to America, and I don't remember who said this, wrapped in a flag and carrying a cross or a Bible. And that's where we're at. We are losing, well, we never really had it, but we have lost sight of, you know, people think Bernie Sanders is going to be the answer. Maybe, but I doubt it. America, you can't fight the tide of America. You can't change the system. You can't change the, the foundation of it. It, doesn't, it won't work. We're at the end of empire. Uh, and comparing it to doing a comparison to the Roman Empire is fine, but it's, 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 I don't think it's, it's enough. I think what we need to understand is this country was founded not on freedom, not on justice, not on any of that shit. It was founded on money. It's a business. It was founded on making more money, taking a continent that was already inhabited by millions of people and killing them. It was founded on an idea of bringing people over from other countries. And I'm not just talking about the South. Berman defends the South and the, the Southern way of life in this book. Um, not slavery, but he defends the slower pace of it. The and, but he also makes an argument against it as well, which I which you know I'll let you read it for yourself before I will go too much into the analysis of that. I just wanted to promote this book, but but Berman makes the point that the North was this industrial, hustling, brutal culture, and the the Southern culture was a little bit more laid back. But again, it was built on slavery, so he makes that argument as well. Um, and the two opposing economic forces on this continent were the southern way of life and the northern way of life. And one of those was going to win and one of those was going to lose. He goes into how Abraham Lincoln didn't really care about freeing any slaves. He wanted to promote business and he wanted to keep the union together. This was all about western expansion as well. He goes into some of the analysis that were done by by some, you know, Robert Penn Warren and others. Um, like I said, Vance Packard, Marcuse, uh, de Tocqueville, all of these people that he goes into. I suggest you go read their stuff and you'll be blown away by it even their analysis in the earliest part of the 20th century. So, in the late 19th century even. So it's, you can, we can kind of look, because, you know, we know that the Civil War started in 1861, and you can kind of look at the pattern of the country that has gone precipitously in the direction of money. And we didn't end up where we are right now by accident. Um, this country is not like your. This country is not like South America. This country is not like really any country in the world. Uh, people think they're free here, but they're only free to pay bills. They're only free to be more in debt, and they're only free to get rich. That's what you're free to try to do, and you're not going to. In fact, what is it? What are the statistics? 80% of the people, 90% of people end up, even higher, that end up in the same economic state that they were born in when they die, essentially in the same class. But you can fill your life with trinkets and baubles from Walmart or Target or whatever you want to fucking, you know, whatever for Amazon and Jeff Bezos' bullshit. You know, five, and you can fill your life with these these meaningless things. And while you don't have health care, while you're paying more for college, while your kids' future is being sacrificed, while the environment is being destroyed, while Silicon Valley is running roughshod all over this country, destroying the West Coast, destroying California as we speak, and Nevada and other places. I drove through Reno. Reno is a shithole, sad, horrible fucking place. Just sad and terrible. And it's so it's surrounded by some of the most beautiful land in the world. I don't know if you've ever been to Nevada. Nevada is a beautiful place. Absolutely beautiful. The skies, the mountains, the land. Even the people are nice, but they're but they're being destroyed. And so and what happens when you just when you use gambling against people? You know, the lottery, for instance, the lottery is a tax on poor people. That's what the lottery is. And I didn't grow up in a state that has a lottery, so Seeing people buy lottery tickets, poor people spend five or six dollars on a lottery ticket that they're never going to win, and they do this every week. Think about what that. I mean, it's a tax on the poor. That's what the lottery is. And I'm not the one that came up with that concept, by the way. There's, I can't remember who it did, but that's it's well known. This country is a business. It's about being rich. It's about getting rich, or die trying, as Fifty Cent would say. 
or any of these horrible rappers or any of these horrible people who don't care about anything else other than money, 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 motherfuckers. That's all that matters. Nice cars and big houses and credit to the hilt and nice clothes and superficiality and hustling. And it's an ugly, ugly culture. And that's what Berman goes into in this book. And he makes some great points and he has some great frames of reference and they go back a long, long time. And so I, I, I suggest anyone that's interested in how America got to where it is today, read it. And understand why we have Donald Trump as a president. This, this book helps explain that. Um, it gives, it's not, a, it's not a positive, he's not, there's no end of the book that's, that gives you some kind of happy ending because there is no happy ending to America. It's a bad place. And I suggest anybody who can gets the fuck out. I'm leaving the country as soon as I possibly can. I have some things I have to do first and maybe a few years, but I'm not going to die here. It's not a, and I don't, this is a dying, ugly place. Every city that I've been to, the roads, the roads in California, and by the way, California, Southern California, Northern California have the largest tax cheats in the world. Somebody sent me a map of this. I've talked about it before, I think, but, and she knows who she is and I thank her for that. She, um, but, but, but seeing that, that they, that the, and you can get this map on Google, the largest tax, taxes owned in the world are in Southern California and Northern California by, by Silicon Valley and other businesses, other corporations. They're the largest tax cheats in the world. On my own state of Alaska, owes, the, the oil companies owe hundreds of millions of dollars, getting into the billions in tax dollars that they're not paying. And now that, that the oil prices have gone from 150 a barrel to less than 44 a barrel, I think they're today, it's, you know, Alaska's in bad shape. The famous dividend that Alaska had that, that made it, that people always talked about getting, is being taken away from its citizens, only simply because the oil companies just simply have, have lobbied the, the House and the Senate, the State House, the State Senate, and the state, uh, our elected officials, they've been able to get the most venal, worst people in there because, and to get more tax cuts and to get more tax breaks and to allow them to rub, run roughshod on the state, the state that they're profiting from and extracting massive amounts of minerals from and natural resources. So read Morris Berman's book or listen to it on audio tape. And remember this quote, if you remember nothing else, John Steinbeck said it, and I've said it earlier in this video, you know, the poorest people in this country look at themselves as temporarily inconvenienced millionaires. You see those tent cities waving those flags over their tent cities. The American flag is, an, is a symbol of oppression, not just for people around the world, but it's, a, it's becoming a symbol of oppression for people in this country. And I hope the people that are listening to this and anybody who cares takes the time to invest in Morris Berman, takes the time to invest in why this country is where it is and where this country is headed. There is no happy ending here, folks. There is no Disneyland good ending. This country is dying. It's ugly. It can't conceal it anymore. Go to any mall. Go to any city. Go to St. Louis. Go to Chicago. Go to Los Angeles. Go to San Francisco. Go to, you know, Boston. Go to New York. Go to Miami. Go to any city you choose to. Anchorage, Alaska, Seattle, Washington. Go to these cities and you're seeing a dying, ugly country. And it's based on capitalism having to have winners and losers. And the majority, the vast majority, the 90% of us are losing. And we and we and Berman makes the point we're to blame for it, and we are, and our leaders are are just doing whatever they want and have turned everything into money. Everything is a dollar sign in this country. When everything has a dollar sign, nothing has any value. Thank you for listening, and please read Morris Berman's book, uh, Why America Fell. Again, thank you for listening. I'll be making more videos too, by the way. So again, talk to you in the future.